Now, you know by now that the past few summers have uh, been filled with superhero movies. Superhero movies, yeah, it's a big thing. Uh, yeah, we've, we've covered a lot, a lot of, them, of them, I guess, you know, pretty much beat this whole genre to death. But there's one in late 2011 that we didn't cover, and we're really trying to nail it now. It's hammer time. We're going to pound this genre into the ground. We're doing Thor. Yeah. Let me just first say that in the wealth of superhero movies we've had so far, this was the worst. You're the worst. This movie sucked. You suck. Look at it, we're feuding. Right. This is what we do. I this mean, the characters, let, let's start with that. Christopher Helmsworth, Chris for short. Thank you. Uh, great character. He played Thor really well. And the other, other characters or other uh, actors, I should say, that have tried out for the role, there was a good selection of taking him. Oh, his brother tried out Liam Hemsworth, which everybody knows his Nobody name. Knows. Then you have like Anthony Hopkins, who I thought nailed it as the father. Um, he actually didn't know what Thor was, much like you and I going in, but he liked the father-son dynamic in the script. There's really no other characters to speak of in this film. I have no idea what Natalie Portman was doing here. A huge actress coming off of Black Swan, Oscar winner. She, she was in it because of the director, Kenneth Brenegg, or whatever his name is. He. Uh, He's known for Shakespearean type movies like uh, Henry V and he kind of brought uh, Shakespeare back to the mainstream. So when he took on this gig, she was like, yeah, I'm in, I'm all in. He could have slept with her, took her sister hostage. There's no, she had no business in this movie. How could you eat an entire box of Pop-Tarts and still be this hungry? Just drink, I like it. Another! You're just discrediting Loki in this thing? I mean, he was a great villain. He had the, the brother, the jealous brother dynamic with uh, Hemsworth. It was incredibly generic, and the turning point of the film was when he finds out he's part of the ice group or whatever they are, like Vanilla Ice and, and company. The turning point of this review is when I stab you. <laughs> No notable characters. You also got Rene Russo back from a six year hiatus from acting. Welcome to your five minutes on screen time. That's pretty much it. And then you have the gatekeeper of whatever that rainbow bridge was called. The, the, Bifrost. the Bifrost. Can we talk about that for it a second? It was awesome. What is with these like sci-fi fantasy films and their stupid names for both characters and set pieces? The Bifrost and Loki and they're all these other... Well, they're based off of both comics and North mythology and Norse mythology, horse mythology. I don't know. Kat Denian's also in it to add a little bit lighthearted humor to the film. What, what is she? Is she the daughter? Is she like the long lost like 20 year difference in friends? Like, I mean, she just has no relationship to these people. She she's, got, uh, she's comedic timing, and that's what the film needed it will, after all the drama going on. You can't on. rely on Skarsgård for that because he's just the villain in every role. And <laughs> he's, I, yeah, he's the, the brilliant scientist in this. He did a, he did a fine job. You know, he segued into the Avengers nicely from this, so you haven't seen that as, as well. All right, let's talk about some of the crappy plot points in this film. First of all, let me just start by saying nothing happens. The highlight of the movie is when Loki can apparently control this giant robot from a different realm puts him on Earth to just blow stuff up with the worst effects ever, and then Christopher Helmsworth has to go get a, a, a hammer and just beat him to death. I'd agree with your statement for the first 20 minutes of the movie. Nothing really happens other than amazing action, and I didn't care about a plot at that point. I thought you'd like this a lot more than you did because it's got a very gladiator-esque kind of script going with it. Uh, you got Loki, who's the jealous brother. He never lived up to his father's expectation. And now he's kind of like on this war path, a uh, path of destruction, if you will, to teach his father a lesson. I mean, let's talk about the moral obligation here of the king and to Thor when he tries to teach Thor a lesson saying we can't just go in vengeance and retaliate against the ice people. And, but it didn't really pan out for me because they did come into the kingdom, they did break the truce, they did steal from Asgarbok or whatever this stupid planet's called. Asgard. And nothing happens from that. You find out later it was Loki that set the whole thing up, but there was just no retaliation and there was just nothing really resolved. And I think that's my whole... Anthony Hopkins has seen some shit. He's been through a lot of battles. You know, there's, there's lessons to be had by everybody in this film. Did he make a poor call? Yeah, probably. But we're really showing how Hemsworth's Thor is kind of off the wall crazy at the beginning. He's just this young brute who wants to just fight first, talk never. And then by the end of the film, he grows as a character. All it took was Natalie Portman to come into his life. It took some love, it took some learning. 
I mean, his father bans him. I mean, that's about as impactful as you can get when your own father, your flesh and blood, tosses you from Asgard onto the shitty planet Earth and says, good luck. Strips your powers. The only thing Thor has to his name is his strength. In the height of The Dark Knight and the remake of Spider-Man and uh, The Avengers coming shortly after, I just think this one kind of, you know, didn't live up to the hype. Well, I do agree that a few films have come out lately that have surpassed it in quality, such as Dark Knight Rises and The Avengers. I'm not going to discredit this thing. So I'm going to award it 15 Rainbow Bridges out of 20, mainly because it does come to a slow in the middle section there, but it picks back up by the end. Well, this is probably one of the worst superhero movies that I've seen in some time. I'm going to go ahead. I, I have to give this 10 out of 30 uh, rock hammers. Okay. It's like a Thor hammer, but it only uses, works on rocks? Well, it's stuck in the rock, you know. Oh, you okay, I got gotcha. you. Uh, Tell us what you think about the movie Thor. Let us know where it ranks in your list of all-time uh, superhero movies. Is it up there with the Dark Knight Rises? Or is it down really low with X-Men First Class? You gotta agree that it's better than Iron Man 2. It's the same. Wow. Wanna just reviews? This is Movie Feuds. Let me start with that line, because I said huge actress okay. like three times. And I meant huge ass. Hugh Jackman. We're going! <laughs> Actually, he talks him down. After he destroys this little tiny town that they live in. <laughs> so dark. Are we like cutting this in? Are we cutting this in? I'm looking at the floor and you're so rambling. Well, I mean, this was probably one of the worst superhero mm. movies that I've seen. Mm. So, I'm going to go ahead and give it five out of 15 ice hammers. Ice hammers? I need a regular hammer? <laughs>